Good morning guys, I am Joke and today I'm going to do another Feria coaching session with Brian. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Joe. All right, let's uh, let's get right into it. So what is it that you want some help with? What can I do for you? <laughs> um, well, I'm pretty new to the game. I, did, I bought the full expansion and uh, made a few decks. I'm still learning all the cards and kind of what to try to play around or kind of see coming as well as... Um, the Red Rush and the, I call it the Rainbow Deck, the like Wish, the, the new Wish card. Yeah, yeah, it's been crushing my uh, my Yellow Deck that I've mostly been playing. So yeah, it's been pretty popular now, but it's I mean when a new card comes, everyone wants to try it, and it seems to be pretty good as well. Yeah, I can't seem to figure out. I mean, I can't really control it, and I can't really rush it down unless I switch decks. So I don't know if we should build a new deck or if I should just jump into some games. Um, what deck is it that you're playing currently? Um, actually, I'm in my own rainbow, green, green, red, and uh, I don't know what this one is. But um, I've been playing yellow sacrifice and yellow control. I like having the mobility with yellow. Oh, I yellow control favorite. It's mobility is so cool. I love it. Yeah, like like kind of like the counter attack almost. You you yeah. you get efficient removal, and um, this is the version I've been playing with. Uh, I don't know if you. I've some fine points, but um, so let me just look at this for a second. So you got a judge, followers, windborn. Windborn is interesting. Uh, soul drain, staff walker, ghouls, soldiers, chargers, prodigy. Yeah, it looks uh, pretty standard. A few cards that are maybe not too common, like the windborn and the royal judge. Uh, I actually haven't tried out the judge is a new one. I used to have choke, but. Um, I, I rarely find a use of playing it, and for four uh, Feria. Yeah, against, I mean, red aggro, you're not going to have too many targets, and um, against the rainbow decks, I don't even know what they're playing. <laughs> they're just playing all kinds of crazy. I mean, they take the best cards from each color, I assume. Yeah, so um, I just swap, swapped it out for the judge. Um, all right, the judge is nice because it gives you an event. It will also trigger your chargers. Mm -hmm. um, that was the other thought, too. The chargers were the other... So the Judge and the ch three Chargers are kind of the four cards I've been playing a lot, um, like different builds. Mm -hmm. Do you like the Charger in this in this build? I I like the Charger, yeah. Okay. Uh, there is this uh, card, now I'm forgetting what it's called, the three cost neutral card, it gives you a campfire. Uh, yeah, that it's, could be good too. It's sometimes used uh, because it gives you the campfire to boost your Chargers and stuff, but... I mean, then I'd have to get rid of the chargers. <laughs> At uh, least one of them. Mm. No, but I think you can try it like this. It looks pretty good. Okay. And then I can show you the other deck. That one's actually more from one that I made. Um, but Or we can just go into a yellow control game. Yeah, that can, has been my favorite. Well, we can do whatever you want. I'm here for um, you. I'll get some, because you're coaching me, I'll get some feedback on this deck. Because this one I actually made, this is the first deck I like fully made on my own. All right. So um, it's a sacrifice deck. And I'm definitely not sure about Ruin here, but uh, Village Elder, uh, Bone Collector, just because it's, it's one for us. Yeah. And um, Followers, again, I, I like the Windborn. I really like having that extra mobility and uh, it's sometimes clear. Yeah, um, yeah the Windborn is nice, I guess. So <laughs> Demon Wrangler, yeah. Um, Soul Drains, three Death Walkers, three Wind Soldiers, three Last Nightmares, and three Shaitans. Right, so... Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people who are absolutely in love with the Shaitan Vampire. Uh -huh. It's uh, really expensive, though. It's seven cost. Uh -huh. But if you manage to get it in, of course, it's amazing. But it can also end up being a dead card in your hand. So I don't know about running three of them. Okay. Yeah, that might be too many. And the idea was to get some clears and throw down a bone collector, but that's yeah. probably kind of ideal situation. No, but... Um, I mean, most pe or a lot of people at least say that Ch Shade on Vampire is one of the best cards in the game. Cool. And, uh, um, so, but and you don't have too many... I mean, you have the Death Walker and um, Demon Wrangler. That's the only thing, right? That you sacrifice here. Yeah, I was playing with the other card too. Uh, the spell. I forget what it is. The thing that gives you a 6-3 charge. Yeah, but it was too much. Like, I didn't have enough minions to sacrifice. And... I just get a ton of minions and get like crazy board control with this uh, this deck. The few games I played. Yeah, uh, I think the Death Wish Ghoul is a pretty good card also to to sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, it's but a good point. Uh, it's hard it to better. fit stuff into your deck. It looks pretty tight here. Yeah. yeah, I think I kind of like it. What do you like? Think about 
the Relentless. I actually haven't played him yet, but just for if a game drags out a bit, to kind of have him there. Yeah, I mean, Runin is uh, it's really expensive. Yeah. And if it doesn't die a bunch of times, I mean, paying 8 fairy to have a 6. Yeah, you're probably right. All right, I'm going to throw in two, two of the games and save that. Um, yeah, let's go into some games. All right. Uh, I'm going to do ranked, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay, now I'll go with the control deck. I feel much more comfortable with it. Yeah, that's good. Um, I haven't played a whole lot of yellow control, but okay. I think I can help you still. What's your uh, favorite color? My favorite color is probably blue green or okay. blue red. Is that like the Apex Predator? Or? No, I mean I liked Apex Predator before it had jump because I like to play Apex Predator into uh, Treat and Banquets to give them jump because I felt all cool then, but now they have jump by themselves. I don't know. It doesn't feel as satisfying to play them anymore and give them jump. They're too good. Cool. Uh, but Apex Predator is certainly a strong card, but um, I like to play a little bit differently. With my yellow green. So, what do you think about a starting hand? I'd probably uh, just keep the soldier. Yeah, I think the other two are pretty terrible right now. Yeah. Um, so that's a decent hand. Oh, this is nice. Um, all right, so the opener, that's definitely one of the things I want to focus on. Because when I get straight up rushed, I freak out a little bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I I usually go that happens a lot, I can imagine. <laughs> way too much. I usually go desert right here. It's usually my standard opener. All right, for why? First. Uh, it gives me mobility because I do need to get to these fairy fairy wells, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Just I mean, it's not flexible. a bad it's not a bad argument. But if you want to defend against rush, it's oftentimes stronger to build towards the left or the right because it's important for you to block off the sides so that, especially against yellow and red aggro, not so mm -hmm. much maybe against green. You want to make sure that you have the spots, the two spots to the left and two, two spots to the right, so that they right. cannot summon a creature and collect fairy and the next turn attack you. I'll give that a shot. Plus, this way. Here comes. <laughs> oh, no, no. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if your opponent were rushing you, this way your opponent would, would also have to play one extra turn where they make land to g reach you. Otherwise, they can just play. You know, two steps above you, and then step onto your your land. Sure, try to block off these these over here. Yeah, so, one. because you have the creature with the haste now, I think yeah, we just play it here. Drop it here, so you can harvest right away. And then we hope that he won't kill it with a soul drain or something like that. Mm -hmm. Should I have soul drained his? Probably right. That would have been a pretty. Yeah, that would have been a yeah. good move. Played a little too fast. <laughs> Oh, but that's a even better. This kind of works target. out better. Yeah. yeah. Glad I kept it. All right. Oh, so we have uh, a vampire. That makes me want to go aggressive here. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about going aggressive here? Um, that sounds pretty good. I don't know how I'd make that move fast enough. I could play two. Um, if you play two, yeah, if, you, if you play two neutrals up, then there is nowhere he can go with this uh, air elemental to defend it, unless he moves it up and plays a land under it. But uh, so you're saying end on this tile or end on this tile? I would just go two straight up. Straight up, I think. Yeah, and I would this turn soul drain the Iona to prevent her from so collecting fairy. Yeah. That's a good call. So then we just pass here, I think. I mean, with yellow control, you usually really want to get your five deserts out pretty quickly, so you have access to your best. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's definitely. Uh, I don't usually do a double. Yeah, like. no, it's uh, oftentimes not the best play, but in this situation, you get to kill this creature and get a very aggressive placed vampire. You go here, yeah. Yeah, because then we collect feria and we can start being like really getting aggressive. these two tiles and. Yeah. yeah sounds good to me. We even have the uh, windborn, so we can do some face attack. Because he will likely move his um, ground shaker to double harvest, unless he has, uh, if he summons something smaller, then he might move back with the ground shaker to defend. Mm -hmm. But if he starts, uh, if he starts walking towards getting back, we can just kill it next turn with a vampire. Perfect. Uh, and the turn. Yeah. So I'm not missing anything. Also, this is why I like having the uh, windborn here, so I can just kind of mislead them with my shaitan. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's absolutely amazing. I almost have the seal and horse master in every deck I make nowadays. It nice. pretty much serves the same purpose, except you get the flying, <laughs> of course, and extra damage. But seal and horse master has a little bit extra range, since it's okay. charge three. So what what would you do in this situation? I would put a desert here, jump, go face, and then probably play the Kalim on this tile. How about, um, yeah, that's a good good play. I'm thinking, how about playing Windborne first, go attack face, and put uh, Kalim on the other side? On this side? Yeah, that's probably not very good, because you could make a... Yeah, that's not so good, actually. Well, I'm just thinking, just like it'll get... collect here. Yeah. It'll collect here, and it's, it's a little safer from this menu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in this case, it's much better to do what you said. I just feel like I like to spread out my lands, so I have a little bit. Oh shit! I fucked up. <laughs> no, you can still I guess we're doing it. we're doing your play. Oh no, yeah. you can still make it. Over. <laughs> That's fine. Um, right, yeah. So I think we're almost winning here. Yeah, I think we're in good shape. Unless he has a good answer. Yeah, he has a lot of feria, but he can play Garudan, but that won't really help him. He can play Last Nightmare. Yeah. Death wish go. Alright, so now <coughs> your um, Kalim's follower won't be able to har uh, attack your opponent. Yeah. But we're not really in a hurry to attack him, I don't think. Well, I could. We could just use it to Soul play. Drain and then play a Windborn to here and, and make put a tile over there. Yeah. yeah. Is that worth it? We're gonna deal eight damage to him then. So I think it's I'm down to four. It. It'll put him on a one turn clock. Yeah, I think that's worth it. Um, or I could draw, but then I can't play the desert and do that. No, I like to play where you soul drain and then wind soldier to get okay. that aggressive land out. And now we have our five deserts also. So from here on, you can probably use every turn to just gain extra fairy or draw extra cards depending on what we feel like we need. Yeah. Yeah, and if I keep getting these, uh, well, I guess he's dead if I get him out, but <laughs> they can collect as well. Yeah. I think... Um, Alright, so another last nightmare. But if he doesn't deal with the other clean... He has three fairy, yeah. There are a few ways for him to kill him, but it doesn't look like he has it on his hand. Oh yeah, he does. He does. Okay. Um. So I just say he's probably got one damage in hand, so I should play the windstorm charger or draw. What are you are you planning on drawing after or? Uh, area? Because if you want to draw, you should always draw first. Yeah. Because we might um, have another option. We trying to think what else I have in the deck for four fairy. No, but I we could, could find Kalim's followers. That would be good. And we can harvest with them and attack. What else do we have? Um, last Nightmare. I don't have any direct damage other than the, the follower. Yeah. Uh, I, I think could get... Hmm? I think drawing here sounds pretty good because yeah. the expensive cards you have are the flying 5-5s five and the vampires. Okay. And the nightmares. None of them won't so. I think right here, so I can collect for you and he can't block me on the style. Yeah, that sounds really good. Alright, so he's going to be able to have six fairy again. Seven even. Um, interesting. So we can deal two damage to him now if we play the Windborn Champion. Mm -hmm. That's probably worth it. I think so too, because then any uh, Kalim's follower that we find will be lethal. Oh, no. Um, I think you tabbed out or something, because I can't see your screen anymore. Oh, really? Or, I don't know, something happened. I just see your beautiful face. <laughs> uh, sorry, man. Advertisement. Uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna lose my turn here. Do you see my screen? Uh, yeah, now I see it. Okay, cool. So I think, 
I think we're born into dealing with the Should I put it here or right here? This yeah. would give kind of this angle. No, probably, probably Ten, here. Yeah, you should probably draw first because you might find lethal now if you have a follower. Yeah, so we have lethal here. If you have the time to play all. I don't think I can. I don't have six mana. Oh, I'm stupid. I am stupid. I'm sorry. But next turn I should have it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> if he plays a taunt, that's about it. Okay. Looks like I get him. All right. Nice. And I feel like I. Uh, Everything I said was like wrong, <laughs> but at least we won the game. Yeah, we did, and I'm I'm pretty comfortable with the stack. So, um, you know, that's I played uh, like 10, 10, 15 games with it yesterday. Oops. Um, so we could we could actually build a new deck. I, I haven't played much blue, or um, if you want to do something like that. No, no, let's keep playing with this. Okay. Uh, I yeah, mean, I'd, unless you yeah. want to do something else. No, no, this is my favorite deck so far. I've tried tried a few different ones. I didn't really like the burn style of play. Uh, I don't really like face decks, and I'm open to pretty much everything else. All right. So, yeah. The, um, especially against the red aggro, it's really important to, to protect those um, land spots, because otherwise the the axe grinder, for example, will grow really big and problematic. Yeah, yeah, it's it's the worst when I see that. Uh, what's it, the siege engine or whatever it is? The that six attack minion, the neutral. Yeah, steam force enforcer. <laughs> yeah, it comes down and then yeah, they get those axe grinders. I just I feel hopeless. <laughs> yeah, your deck um, doesn't have too many answers for those really quick uh, aggressive openings. At least not when they have that much stats. Yeah. Uh, I'd get rid of the whole hand here. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> All right, so this is a bit awkward. Yeah. So what would you think of opening here? Um. Oh, but he's aggressive here. I don't know. I might just try to counter rush and play Shaitan, but I don't know. I don't think you have to like really. I mean, he's gonna bring creatures to you. I'm pretty sure he's coming at you. Yeah, I just don't have any way to collect, so I could try to block these three off. But is it better to play defensive this way? I think so. And you want to make sure to not use explore here because uh, you want to probably keep it until it's relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, we might even get the. The creature out that benefits from playing events before we have to use it, that would be really good. Sure. But I would build now lands to either left or right. Just a single desert? Yeah. And uh, now we hope that he plays something like <laughs> two uh, pr prairies and then something that we can kill with the vampire. It's quite unlikely because most okay. of them. Alright, so he's just putting a. And I got a ghoul, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, so the thing is now, if you had built forward, uh, your desert forward, he could now, on his next turn, drop a haste creature and attack you. This way, he's not able oh, to Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Unless he has an elemental in his hand. But if he had the mm -hmm. elemental in his hand, he would have probably already played it so that he could start collecting fairy. So I think you just drop another, um, another desert. To the right? Yeah, and drop the Death Wish Ghoul. Okay. I wasn't sure if I should maybe build here and then play a little defensive. This is where this is where I'm really struggling. This kind yeah, of it's uh, it's more important to have that spot now where your Death Wish Ghoul is than the one next to your orb. Maybe oh. I'm not sure. No, the next to your orb is really important as well. But he's gonna get he's gonna be a little bit frustrated now because he has to play either a desert, but then he can't reach you. Or he plays double prairies, but then he can't access his double desert creatures. So now he's trying to get that spot over there. So yeah, now, what do you think? now we have to use explore to get the desert on the left side. 
What do you think about doing double prairies and then the explore here? Uh, I guess he doesn't really need this spot, right? That, that spot not, is too far right. away, especially for yellow. Yeah. Um, and he could just get that on the right side anyway, if he wanted to. So I mm -hmm. think we... Desert here, or actually, explore here, explore desert here. Explore into desert, yeah, so we can collect with the ghoul and then kill, uh, use it to kill something. So he's now getting um, some good spots. But we have <coughs> these four most important tiles covered. Is there any reason to move this to this tile? No. You want okay. to collect with it next turn. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Well, there is, there is the one point, but it won't really matter since he could just do it on the other side. Uh, sure. If he wants to summon something and like he, he want to make a desert there maybe next to your ghoul. Because that's a better spot than right in front of the orb, I think. But next turn you're going to have a great vampire turn because he's going to drop something here for sure. He's going to drop multiple creatures and spread them out. That's a good point. No, I probably won't be able to get a two for one though. He's going to play two more creatures. He has too many haste. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he d maybe doesn't. Oh, he's killing everything, but he doesn't summon anything. That's else. a lot of mana. Ooh, interesting. Well, I think I just uh, wind. collect and win, win soldier that, right? Yeah, win soldier and follower on the other side, because you're gonna collect uh, both area now. That's cool. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna draw, am I? No, I think you just drop a desert. Okay, right here. Yeah. And to make the follower, yeah, to collect Feria. I just want him staying here on this tile, correct? Um, I could try to cover up this land as well. And yeah, force yeah. Let's, let's walk I, towards it because he only has one Feria. He's, he's going to be on four. <laughs> do you think it's worth um, forfeiting? I have 13 that I'm not really using. Yeah, so just drop it there and step onto his desert. That's better, I think. It's hard to say. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you have a lot of Feria. You're good on that point so this way he's gonna have to he cannot draw if he wants to attack and he cannot gain fairy because he has to make a new desert so he drew which means he will not be playing any haste creatures to attack you just yet at least uh, so maybe, maybe this three three haste guy yeah. Where do you want to drop your Windborn Champion if he doesn't summon anything now? Um. Oh. Well, yeah. I don't have a, I don't have a desert tile. Ideally, I'd like to. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to hit that line. Usually, what I do is I wait till I get five deserts mm -hmm. and I drop them then and fly them all the way up and put a desert here. Uh, that's well, not gonna be possible this game. You can um, you can still move the Windborn Champion after you summon it, so you can still do that. Because you don't want to move your Kalim's follower. But yeah. I, but I would probably if you just drop a desert now, maybe on the left side, so he doesn't get the that spot. Because there, from there, he could still use Wind Soldier. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, so here. Yeah. And then I would just so. drop a Windborn Champion. On this one that I just created? Yeah, and move it onto his uh, yeah, that's, that's other true. desert, maybe? Oh, uh, that's a good play. And then you drop the, another Windborn Champion to start threatening attacking his face. I would probably okay. drop it right, left right here. to the left of your followers on, that, on his land, so he cannot move on it. This one? Uh, yeah, you, you put it there and then you move it a little bit to the right so it's next to your follower so you can attack face with it. Okay, Because now he has to make a desert that's right. really... So right here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. And now he drops a vampire that's going to get <coughs> a billion damage done but you're going to hit him for 10 damage on your turn if you want to attack. It's really good to just try to stand on his land 
it's so frustrating for your opponent. No, that was a really good play. I definitely didn't see that. So he spent a lot of resources here to get rid of that one. Mm -hmm. We're happy with that. Wow, um, our hand is crazy. Do you want, maybe want to drop one in his face to threaten lethal? I think turn? so, over drawing. I think that makes more sense. Yeah, because then you have lethal next turn. Unless I count really bad. And he's only got six, so he could remove one. But okay, I count it's... really bad apparently, because this is not lethal, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is 12, all right. Well, it's still pretty good. I could easily draw into it. Um, okay. Yeah, one off, people. That's okay. I think he's starting to sweat a little bit, the counter rush. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I see a lot of players, um, especially when they go second, that they just use the explore right away. But that just gives uh, yeah. your opponent the information and gives them unnecessary information about what you're planning to do. It's better to hold on to it like we did now so that we could use it when when it actually mattered. So we could use it to block off that land and create this extra forward land. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I've, I've been watching some of your other videos and... That's a good a good point you keep uh, coming back to. Yeah. Keeping your hand in general. Yeah, I really talk about that a lot. It's the only thing I talk about. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I mean, you, it's especially if you're coming from Hearthstone or something else, you just kind of play everything yeah, out. Yeah, you used to, you, you feel like it's uh, you're doing something wrong unless you play everything, and that's absolutely not the case in this game. All right, well, that Death Walker is not going to be able to touch us anytime soon. So I think I'm just going to try to draw the lethal. Yeah, I think that's a good play. And I don't have it. We um, find a lot of vampires. <laughs> I know, I got all three of them. I don't think we are in any danger. I mean, we don't have to clear the 6-5, because even if he finds a way to attack us with it, sure. he won't die, because he's going to have to spend most of his resources to even get that ha to happen. He can go up and kill our Windborn Champion, but that doesn't matter. You can yeah, I was thinking about moving them over, but that doesn't make any sense, so I think just attack here. And then, should I move him up to block him if he wants to come forward? It opens me up here, but... Mm, I think it's more important to block the tile you're standing on, because from there he can find... Well, he's going to be able to clear I was thinking anyway. if he's moving up this way, he's going to kill me either way. And yeah, then he can drop yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You should move up, because otherwise he will just move down and kill it. And then he'll be one tile further this way. Yeah. He's probably going this way anyways. He probably lost, but just... <laughs> yeah, just I don't think he's going to come back from this. But he wants to deal a little bit more damage. So, do you have any active quests that you know of? That oh well, you have the full collection, so it doesn't really matter too much. No, nah, I like doing the quests. Uh, I probably do. All right. If we keep this up, you're soon going to be higher ranked than me. <laughs> what rank are you at? Well, the ranks were reset today, so I'm 10. I haven't played yet. Okay, I got you. Um, I don't have any. Um, yeah, so what do you think? Same deck? We're doing well with it. Well, yeah, I, can I mean... Um, do you know any, um, blue is the only color I really haven't played at all. Um, right. Do you have a good blue list or would want to help me out with that or? Um, sure. Uh, do you want to play mono blue or something that splashes other colors? Because I feel blue, just like green, is a color that complements really well with other colors. They can do well on their own, of course, but uh, I like to play a little bit more dual color if I'm playing blue. Um, 
I'm pretty indifferent. We can do uh, a dual color. Alright, well, uh, go to the blue cards, pick out whatever you feel looks really cool, and then we'll take it from there. And that's the problem, is I don't really know the blue cards very well yet. I know... Uh, Aurora Mythmaker is a very powerful good place card. to start. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but you said that you don't really like to be aggressive, you want to have these movement abilities, so Shifting Tide is an amazing card for movements. Okay. Because your opponents oftentimes don't see it coming, and then all of a sudden you shift your lance around and kill them. It's really fun. So Sounds there are good. a few different ways we can play blue. We could add blue green and play some apex stuff that everyone else is doing, or we can play. I like to have big creatures from green and then have the mobility from blue to like, like my Verduran forces all of a sudden has jump and stuff. Okay. Or uh, so blue green. If you want, or blue that, anything. What else uh, does blue complement? Blue, I think, works with any other color. Blue red is popular. Blue green is popular. Blue yellow is not maybe too common right now. Um, but uh, they have the most fun uh, six land card, I think, with the. Twin Cell Spirit. Which one are you talking about? The blue yellow card, the Twin Cell Spirit, is I think my favorite of the duo land cards. It's so fun. This guy? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, let's let's do let's do it. I like I like yellow the best and blue seems right. well awesome. twin cells I mean the blue yellow is not I think at all <laughs> close to the strongest, but it's really fun. So let's try let's, it. Let's do it, yeah. Um how many copies? One probably? 20. Take 20. Them it's so fun. Okay. I mean, it's not <laughs> ta getting up to six lands is not so hard. I mean, you were playing this uh, control deck now and you had five five deserts real quick. So Sure. Yeah, one more. Um, we probably don't want to have the five cost cards from any of the other colors, though, because that's yeah. a bit greedy. I agree with that. Let's do uh, Last Nightmare, right? Last Nightmare is always nice. Soul um, Drain is really good. Yeah. And we want to play with a lot of mobility just because it's fun, right? So maybe, yeah, I agree. maybe uh, take the Windborn again. I'll do two copies of that. It can be nice. And Should we do, if we do a lot of events, we can use both the fairies. I've always kind of wanted to do that. They nerfed the blue fairy quite hard. And oh, okay. the yellow fairy is pretty bad. The green right. and blue used Scratch to be really that. good. So I don't know. But we can add Aurora's Disciple. Which is a very powerful card from blue. It grows every time we play events. Uh, yeah, this guy. Quite annoying to deal with. <laughs> yeah, oh. can be really strong. I like to have... Um, Alright, so we already have a ton of events. Maybe we should add some... <laughs> you want to get some card draw. Uh, I don't know. Lord Thief is it. pretty good. Um, I, I like um, Triton Banquet. Because it gives you jump and protection. We already have so many like mobility stuff already, but which uh, which card? Uh, Treat and banquet from blue. There is another called card Treat and Chef that also gives you a Treat and banquet. Could you start? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Whichever you prefer. Fine. Fine. We yeah, need yeah. to add some creatures to that. Like, so yeah, maybe, I agree. Maybe the Treat and Chef is better than the Treat and banquet. Should I go three copies? No, let's take two one. or so. Okay, we'll do two for now. Um, all right, yeah, and then, and then creatures. Um, I don't really know too many blue. Yellow, they seem a little weak stat-wise. Yeah, blue also don't have like the best stats. They have mobility and stuff and transformation effects. What do you think about throwing in some neutrals and just buffing them? Yeah, neutrals are not bad. There are a bunch uh, of good neutrals. I don't know. Is there anything in particular you're thinking about? The one I was thinking of is the 4-4. Four, four. I think it's the 4. Just this guy, the Maceman. Maceman? Yeah. It's been quite popular. I watched Lou's stream earlier and he said uh, he really likes Maceman. Um, 
<laughs> I don't know if there's any synergy with this deck so far. Yeah, right now there is. Uh, it's just a lot of mobility. I think yeah. what, what we need is like we need some big guys to make use of this mobility. That's why you go green, yeah. So, uh, but maybe we should just. I mean, we have Wave Crafter from um, from blue. It's quite big, but it's three legs, so it's a bit slow. Uh, the Colossi, the blue Colossi is really good. Uh, it cost, I think, eight in the beginning. So if you just get it to trigger twice, it's basically the same stats as and cost as Viduran Force. Mm -hmm. I really like the Wave Crash Colossi. Especially okay. if we have so much mobility, we will probably be able to collect a lot of Feria. Hopefully. Three of them? Yeah, let's take three. So now we have three big guys and we have three win s Twin Cell Spirits. That's a lot of stuff. We should maybe get yeah. some more early games. Like, what do you think about Farm Boys? Um, or Treat and Dive? Good for Aurora. Yeah, that could be interesting. We could do um, Farm Boys and then we could do the Sacrifice card. Yeah, right. Um, and we also have. What else would be good to sacrifice? Aurora. Aurora and... Uh, That's kind of it. Yeah. We don't have too many targets for Deathwalker, but maybe we can use the, the thing that... Yeah, we can <coughs> add one or so. What do you think about um, some Kalim's followers? They're good for collecting Feria and we can also use them to... Because I think if we can just get into like the later part of the game, we have so much stuff with the Twin Soul Spirits. I mean, that's 8 attack for 4 Feria. This looks like a really strange deck. <laughs> yeah, it does. I, I love it. I don't know about it. <laughs> um, I don't think we need 3 Farm Boys and 3 Kalim's Followers. No, that's probably true. Um, I have no idea. Maybe we should have done something more standard. <laughs> this looks uh, crazy. <laughs> um... Hmm. I don't know. I don't like this too much. Not the more I look at it, I don't either. Um, why don't we just do? Uh, I hate to waste all the time building decks, but why don't we do more of a uh, blue green? All right, let's deck do that you blue have? green. That makes a little bit more sense. Or I mean, you can make this work, of course. But blue I'll green. Uh, I'll come back to it. Yeah. All right. So first thing, every time you play blue, add three shifting tide and one auroras. Uh, Aurora's, uh, what's, uh, what's her name? Mythmaker. Mythmaker, yeah. Yeah. And now there's a bunch of different combinations you can do with green blue. It's the Enchantress decks with the Gabriel enchantment that transforms the creature's attack to be equal to its health. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of green cre creatures that have very low attack but a lot of health. So it's a good synergy, like the Living Willow and. Also the, um, what's it called? The it's five the cost creature. Yeah. The grizzly, yeah. And then blue also has a bunch. They have the <coughs> sturdy shell, which is a zero five, which is also great harvesters. Do we want to throw in Feed the Forest or is that too slow? Feed the Forest? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Let's see if we have room for it. When okay. we feel finished. We should add the enchantresses and the enchantments before we forget them. I think we take three of each. Okay. Alright, so now we have the the base. We have our combo going. And a lot of these cards are good by themselves. Also, even if we don't find the combo pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just super sticky minions. Yeah. Uh, and I feel if you play green anyway, I think it's a very good idea to just add three Verduran forces because they're so good for their cost. Yeah, makes sense. And then there's a bunch of cool buffs you could use as well. The Tiki <coughs> Takers or Ruin's Command. Uh, Caretaker's a pretty neat card. Yeah. Did you? I know you haven't played it so long. It used to say give a creature plus three plus three. Wow. It was for three, for three Feria still? Uh, Did the price I, go down? I don't remember if it was three or four cost. It was still really good. Um, All right, so green has some other really cool stuff, don't they? 
Maybe. Yeah, I've played a decent amount. Green was the first uh, decks I started playing. What cards do you like from Green? Um, I played a Feed the Forest deck back when I played it, so I used Bone Collector's Feed the Forest. Um, your 1-5, one, one the guy that gives a 5-5 five, five minion, or adds something in your hand, plus 5, plus 5. Yeah. Um, Oakling. I, Oakling I is good with this also, because we can make it a 5-5. Five, five. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. Actually, that sounds pretty good. Because uh, we don't really have to care so much about harvesters, because we have the... I mean, Grizzly can harvest. And everything can harvest here. The sturdy shells. The only thing that you don't want to play to just harvest, I guess, is the Gabriel Enchantress. Mm -hmm. Or or, or Mythmaker. Um, I use Earthcraft sometimes. Probably be good for this deck, since we have to... Uh, but I don't know if we're going to need card draw. No, but also we have some card draw already with the um, Shifting Tide and with the Gabriel Enchantment. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, however, um, I mean, this deck really doesn't need too much lands. It's only four lands right now. It's We don't need to have anything to boost that. Okay, that's a good point. The Ancient Boar could be interesting because we anyway have a lot of creatures that has a lot of health. Not the Ancient Boar, sorry. Ancient Beastmaster. Ancient Boar as well, I guess. But the Ancient Beastmaster would buff everything. Yeah, actually, that's a good combo piece. All right, I'll put three of those in. I would probably like a few more buffs, so I might want to take something out. All right. I guess we have we have like uh, stat buffs, but I was thinking from blue. Isn't there something that gives it like we jump? Should, we should. Yeah, we have. Uh, let's uh, treat them backward. We don't maybe need the grizzlies to be honest. We should maybe. We also didn't add any removal yet. Yeah, you're right. Okay. I think uh, so. If you want to use the Treat and Banquet, I love that idea. I always love that card. Maybe uh, two copies, probably. Yeah, probably not three, not three. But then let's have some sort of removal, be it Unbound Evolution, Frogify, or Humbling Vision, whichever you prefer. Um, Do you know the difference? Frogify yeah. turns it into a two-two. Yeah, it costs five. Yeah, unbound, what's the other two? Unbound Evolution transforms a creature into something that costs two more. It sounds like it's a card that you want to use on your own creatures, but most of the time you want to use it to remove something that has been either discounted or playing on something that has crazy last words effect, like Ruining, or maybe something that has been buffed really much, like an Apex Predator. But you can also use it on your own creatures if it's wounded or if you just want to try your luck and get value. really cool. Yeah. And then the last card is uh, Humbling Vision, it costs 3 and it reduces the attack and health of a creature by half. Okay, interesting. Um, it's a little bit more safe, but if we I think the Frogify is also really good. We probably have the minions to make this work. It's a pretty heavy minion deck. Yeah. Um, and then there's also the one, it's a 5-5 five five that transforms into a 5-5. Five five. Yeah, Mirror Phantasm. Okay, no, let's go with Frogify. Um, I only have room for one copy, we probably need more than that. Let's see what we can take out. The Beastmasters are probably really, don't need. yeah, I mean, they're really good if you have them in the start, but you don't, you would feel sad if you draw them later on. Maybe two is enough. With the new Mulligan system. Uh, we'll probably be able to find uh, Beastmaster anyway. Do I need three frog fights? No, I don't think so. Okay, so then I'll go Beastmaster. So these yeah. are my type of favorite decks when you have these. Or actually, let's do one last thing. There's a neutral card, the Silent Horse Master. I just love that card. I want to have it in every deck. <laughs> I don't know what to remove though. Oh, but it's that's so, the card you're talking about. It's that's so, really cool. Yeah, it's really good with Verduran Force or anything that's big. It's really good. Um, probably drop an Oakling? Yeah, let's drop an Oakling. Is one, one copy you're happy with or do you want three? <laughs> no, no, one, one is good enough because okay. sometimes you draw them without having a good target. Um, I was going to give you a, a shout out here. Uh -huh. Jokes. What do you want to call it? You got it. Um, Five letters left. <laughs> Let's call it the. Um, hmm. What's the MVP of this deck? 
Um, it's shifting tide, of course. It's always right. shifting tide. We'll just call it. I don't think I'll agree with that. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So our dream now is if we have in our opening hand a Viduran Force and a shifting tide. Because then on turn three, we just fly we'll over. Shift it towards it. Yeah, <laughs> it's so much fun. Crazy. All right, let's do it. Um, Shifting Tide. All right, so with, the, I mean, there is so many decks currently that just have a very strong win condition, like the Burn, for example, they just mm -hmm. win over time. We have the Aggro that just throws everything in your face. This is a lot different from that. All right, so we have a, what do you think about a starting hand? I like keeping Verduran, but uh, I think we're better off with these two. If we keep the Sturdy Shell and the Enchantress, we're going to be pretty good against aggro. And even if they don't play aggro, we will have a really good harvest oh, on turn. We'll one. have a good opener. Yeah, yeah, I think this is pretty good. I don't think yeah. I would keep the Verduran Force if we keep the Enchantress and yeah. Shell. Yeah, I'm with you on that. All right, so let's try to find something else. A Living Willow, all right. So now we can use the uh, Enchantress on the Living Willow instead, if we have to. Something um, that you have to remember that I always keep forgetting is don't block your sturdy shells with forests or explore. <laughs> oh, because they cannot sim swim over it. Yeah. So yeah, that's the point. I would probably just now drop a lake to the left or the right so that the sturdy shell can collect next turn. And you would do that over explore lake to bring out a little bit. Um, yeah, because I want to use the explore to maybe, because we, we need two forests, right, for the living willow, so sure. depending on what he's doing now, we might be able to, I mean, we play one forest, maybe next turn, depending on what we draw, and later on we can maybe explore forest, so we play a living willow right uh, next to his creature. Oh, so this looks like a burn. Burn, yeah. He's not gonna so, expect that your your little turtle here is gonna be a five five soon and kill his two two, if we need to. So I'm definitely going here. Um, so next turn, I'd like to shifting tide this guy to attack with the buff. You cannot shifting tide him if he's not standing on the land. Because shifting tide says move land. So should I put a, a blue underneath, or you think I'm blocking myself in too much? If you want to play blue, I mean, he's going to... I think we can... Hmm. We, he's, I, I'm not... I don't know. He's, we don't really need to stress about killing him. I would probably want to start dropping forests now, maybe to the left side, or towards him. No, that works. Yeah, because we will collect more than he will. Maybe. I just know generally with burn, I, I feel like I have to make my moves a little faster than I, than I normally like. That is like true, to. yeah. We, need, we don't have any heals. So what we could do now is that we play uh, Explore above our forest and then we play because we want to kill the blood singer not this turn but the turn after so we need to drop a look if we drop the explore now on the above our forest or to the left of our forest and then a forest uh, next to the fairy well mm -hmm. play the willow yeah because then next turn we can fly it over with the shifting tide to kill his uh, blood singer. Yeah, this guy's always going to be the hardest time. And we... The question is if we want to move up with our turret <coughs> or not. If we move up now, he can attack it without us hurting it back. So I think I would just yeah, stay I think we over it. there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we will also have a 7-7 seven, seven pretty aggressively that can... Yeah, I'll take a few damage here, but... Um, so... Maybe I should still kill the Bloodsinger first, because he'll be... 
he'll be taunted or I can deny his fairy. Um, if you, I think killing the Bloodsinger is fine because then you also get a pretty aggressive land. So what we have so to I'm, do is... I've never done this before, so... Okay, so you need to play a mountain. Uh, no, no, sorry, a lake uh, uh, in front of your living Bring willow. It. Yeah, and then you step on the lake and uh, move it to the right with the shifting this? tide. Move it around. And then we need to play the Gabriel enchantment Enchantress to make it a 7-7, seven, seven, because otherwise he's just going to laugh at us. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so this way we also have a pretty aggressive land established. So next turn we can play a forest and play a Verduran forest. Mm -hmm. that makes sense. Should I move the? Still keep him here, probably. Yeah, because now we don't have the buff that. Oh well, we have the. Tiki we have the tiki. There. Yeah. So and I, don't, I feel like he's not going to spend his turn. Yeah. This yeah, way. I think. Yeah, we have the tiki caretaker, so I think we can move it up. It's a good point. Now let's hope it doesn't have a bomb slinger. Oh yeah. He's well, even if he does, just, it's still a. Uh, yeah, he's it's probably just gonna cipher his wrath. This, I would imagine. No, it's a bomb slinger. Okay. That's not too bad though. Two for one. Yeah. Kind of. I uh, used three cards for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Um, our cards were way cheaper. Um. Might want to use the enchantment here because then we also draw a card. Yeah, that's a good point. I was going to say we should draw a card, but let's do that first. Because we don't want to use our wheel here to draw a card, because we want to get the forest down, so we can play an aggressive Verduran Force in front of his orb. I also have the combo here, if I go... Oh, yeah, you're probably right. So, forest to Verdun. Yeah. Right here? Yeah, I think so. Because, okay. as you said, we're up against burn, we need to be a little bit aggressive. And then just kill this to deny him some area. We might want to buff our Verduran Force so he cannot clear it with uh, playing another Bomb Slinger. Or okay. could he then? Wait, no, he won't kill it with another Four, Bomb Slinger. 4, 8. No, I'd be at 9. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Should I put him here? Uh, I, risk, I risk losing it, but I feel like he needs to start defending his base. You can still harvest with him even if you put it on the... Oh, yeah, you're right. It's right. a little bit safer. So he could still clear this with the... Um, what can he clear this with? For seven? I don't think anything. No. So he's just gonna stand in the way here. So next turn we can play Treaton's Banquet to make sure it won't die. <coughs> and we're gonna have really good board Maybe not. Um, oh, oh, you can, can even shifting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. No, or wait. Just thinking. If we do it, well, we should maybe. I won't have enough fairy, right? Because I'll have. You can harvest um, all three wells if you make n new land. I think you want to use shifting tide to move it away, move his creature out of the way. Uh huh. Harvest oh. here. Yeah, and harvest with the sturdy shell. And after you moved him away, you make a land in front of it, so you can yeah. step on it, and you make a land so that your 2-5 can harvest. Would you go this side? To the left, yeah, so that all his mountains are on one side, then it's not as dangerous. I would make double prairies here, so you can... Uh, here and here? I would make it so that your other guy can harvest, probably. The what other guy? To 2-5. There's a fairy over Oh, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. And probably play Treat and Banquet here, so you cannot yeah. kill it. Go Do face? It. Yeah, play Treat and Banquet before you attack, so we get that one extra damage, because now we threaten lethal for the next turn. Hey, this deck's working. Yeah, I mean, maybe we're just lucky, but moving <laughs> lands is fun, right? I mean, yeah. it doesn't have to be good, as long as it's fun. It's so you always good. have to step on the land first, and then move it, is that right? Uh, not always, but um, I don't know. This time I think it made sense. Maybe. Okay. Wrong. So cool. did, we didn't lose a game yet, right? No, we're three, three. No, I didn't lose. All right, nice. So you're soon passing me. Damn it. 
<laughs> I think that's a goal for the day. Let's get let's, let's get to, let's get to let's the, get to the yellow blue deck instead, so we start losing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we gotta we gotta keep it up here. Um, yeah, I'll play that again. Blue's fun. Yeah, I like blue. I mean, I right like now, I like decks that have like interesting mobility, like kind of because most people try to play around, kind of like you said, like you hang on to your cards because you're still um, a tile or two away, right? Um, yeah, I mean, people don't expect all these mobility tools and that's what makes them so great and I mean Shifting Tide it also has a great uh, I mean you, you can it's so diverse because you can also use it to draw a card sure or, or play defensively too I imagine yeah So I'm going to look a little bit at my notes and see if there's something that I should tell you. Because, I don't know, sometimes when I'm coaching, I feel like I'm not really coaching. I'm just sitting here playing with you and having fun, <laughs> not giving so much advice. Well, it's definitely helping me out. I'm, I'm seeing some new things, especially with a new deck like this. I think I have a lot to, a lot to learn. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm having fun. So I'm... <laughs> yeah, me too. All right, so what do you um, think about this hand? I would probably get rid of Aurora and keep these two. But why do you want to get rid of Aurora? Um, because I don't. Well, I don't know. Because I'd I, probably play this card on on the Sturdy Show. Do you like this hand? I like this hand. Yeah, I would. I would keep it like this. Okay. Um, because we have so many targets in our deck for Gabriel Enchantment, so having it in yeah. our hand is not bad. Because then we also have the I mean, because making the sturdy shell into a six-six instead of a five-five can be important sometimes. We'll sure. Um, that's a good point. So I would just do the same start as last time. Yeah, let's go to the left this time. I'm left-handed. Yeah. Uh, I always go. I always go right. <laughs> yeah, I always right. go left. Feels weird to go right. It's the right <laughs> I almost did the last game, and I was like, "No, nah, that's that's too awkward." Again. All right. All so right. he's rushing us, but. Um, he won't expect this uh, turtle to do all this defense that it's about to. Sure. So here and then uh, a blue tile here. I think uh, we drop a forest actually because we will be able to play every card we have next sure. turn by dropping yeah. the like then. Yeah. But and a taunt would be good here. Yeah. He and this way we will be able to play pretty much any card next turn no matter what we draw. Okay. That's a good point. I haven't played a much two color decks, so I think that's a good uh, good right, point. So to he's know. making some interesting uh, directions here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. Does this have jump? Yeah. Yeah. So this is that creature is threatening our our beautiful turtle. So I would probably want to use the Gabriel enchantment here. Yeah. Um, should I? So probably a a pool here. Yeah, I would drop my leg over there. See what we get. Oh, I could a kill banquet. it. Yeah, let's just kill it. <laughs> we'll have a six-six flying turtle. I love it. All right. Yeah, just right there. Yeah. Okay. This way. I mean, no matter what he plays now, we're gonna be able to deal with it, especially since we have the frog fight. Yeah, that's a good draw. <laughs> he might uh, do something to mess Excellent. with our okay. yeah. Unbound evolution would be strong on it. Turn it into a four creature, four cast creature. All right, so he's also playing green. Yeah. Well, That's his second elemental. That makes me makes me think if is this. It might be the, the, the wish deck. Wish deck, yeah. Yeah. Um, All right, so we probably want to jump into a spot where we either threaten to attack him or take out a creature or his face. You think uh, over farming and blocking? Yeah, I think, I yeah, think I guess we, we can build here too if we do that. We have a pretty good momentum going. I think we should keep it going. I agree. Um, so we go here, put a pool. We no, can't probably jump onto this. his lands because we are aquatic. Aren't I flying now too? Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, no, it's not flying. It's just jump. Um, Would you still go here? 
uh, we can't go there because it's oh yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> you just said that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right so i would maybe just go one like jump as far forward as we can so next turn we can either take out his uh, elemental or well we won't be able to go face then okay so right here yeah but if we go there we can't take his face uh we can't take his face from anywhere though i don't think no so maybe we just go to the left bottom left and collect fairy because the next turn we can no let's go to the other side because then oh, we could have... i'm kind of scrambling for time <laughs> yeah yeah i know that feeling we don't need uh, to play anything here yeah i think we're good if we had gone to the other side, to the bottom uh -huh. left, then we could click twice and prevent him from oh, and collecting. Threaten. Yeah, that makes sense. But this way also, if he summons anything aggressively, we can probably deal with it. Alright, so that's something we should definitely go and kill. Okay. Um. Oh, we can even drop uh, another shell and use uh, Gabriel Enchantment on it. Put him right here. I would jump twice now to collect. And, uh, or maybe, I don't know, do we need to be aggressive with our second shell? Maybe we can just harvest with it. Put him back here? Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, what would you do, draw? I would first draw with Gabriel enchantment, probably. This guy? Oh, this that one. That one doesn't draw, yeah. Enchantment. Let's see. Yeah. Another, Another sturdy, sturdy shell. shell, holy crap. Let's uh, put that one aggressive then, because he might frog if fire or something. Up here? Yeah. Or we can even do a pool. Uh, no, we can't. Yes. So now that one will be able to double harvest even if he kills the 6-6. Six, six. This is a weird game so far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to hit his face though, right? And let, well, no. I guess if I can he, get his... He has a leg, so you can step on his leg. Yeah. That works out. Oh no, it's trying to trap your turtles. Aurora Mythmaker. It's alright though, it's a good trade. Uh, but it's probably oh, gonna on. do something here. Hmm. Alright, so. <coughs> uh, we could put a. Hmm. Put a willow here. Buff it, but I don't know if that's a good use of it. That we could buff it with Aurora. Hmm. Let's see. I could also trade. I kind of want to harvest. And yeah, you can't harvest now because he blocked you. Cause you're a oh, I see what you're saying. Um, but do sure. we maybe want to kill his disciple before it grows too much? Yeah, probably. We could just uh, frogify and drop the enchantress on the right side to later deal with his myth maker. What if we just did. Or we sacrifice our creature and don't use Frogify. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. All right, let's do it. And then we drop a Living Willow. Put her here? Soon. Yeah. And uh, Willow here? Yeah, and there we can drop the Living Willow. And don't forget to harvest with your turtle. All right. So now we can make our <coughs> Living Willow a 6-6 six, six if we need to, if we can't find another enchantment. We already played 3, right? Or 2? Uh, I think just 2. 2, yeah. So we have 4 left in the deck. We have one more Triton Banquet as well. Oh, so oh, Apex shit. Predator, that's a good target for Froggy Fire. Glad I saved that, yeah. <laughs> um, Alright, so... Let's see here. Um, I definitely want to clear this, right? Uh, well, actually, the thing is, yeah, the thing is with the Tiki Caretaker is that it has no impact on the board right now because it cannot threaten you, it cannot mm -hmm. collect Feria. The Aurora Mythmaker, however, has a big impact on the board. Yeah, it's I was thinking of clearing with her. And then frog... Oh, but I probably you want to... You need to use her to kill, kill the, the frogged creature. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but I would okay. probably still step one up so we stand on his lake to just be annoying. Yeah. And then move back with the willow to take out the 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Get some harvest that way. Start moving up with the... Uh, start the shell probably. 
And uh, sure. so now we know that he's playing Apex, which uh, we only have two frog fights, right? Yeah, so, so one's going to... Maybe problem. we want to start drawing cards here because we want to find some more answers. That's a pretty but good answer. That's a pretty good one. Alright, I think that's good. <laughs> it's like not enough time with the, especially with the new deck. <laughs> yeah. To discuss all the options. With I've, like five. Been, I've been typing in the feedback channel for a long time that I want the longer turn timer. There should be a mode for that. Alright, so I think here yeah, we just drop the creatures, yeah. We have incredibly much better. Um, economy than our opponent so mm -hmm. the long like if the game keeps going like this we're just gonna get fur farther and farther ahead sure so we trade here do yeah. i move this up or i keep it here to f double farm i think you move it up because you will still double harvest next turn and move this one up too or leave her here i think i would farm. leave her so that we farm with her yeah she'll be a 2-1 so yeah she's not gonna and viridian here yeah and now he might want to use an Apex onto our 7-7, seven, seven. we'll see. So now the question with the Sturdy Shell is, do we move it to the left to double harvest next turn, or do we move up to deny him harvesting? Um, I think if we can just deny him from harvesting... We're yeah, just gonna, that makes more sense. Cause we're going to get two per turn anyways, or three actually. He can only yeah. get one. Well, I guess he can get two when he sacrifices this. I maybe should have buffed that preemptively because he's probably gonna. Yeah, we can anyway turn it into a six six. So even if he hurts it a little bit. Uh, ah, yeah. Good. Okay. That's a little bit annoying. Oh, and he has to treat him, Jeff. But he he. So now we know he has to treat him banquet in his hand. Right. So he can get that next turn if he uses his plus one, right? Three. Uh, no, five. he's gonna four ferry. It cost five. Right, so three, four. Oh, yeah, because he's collecting over there. Yeah, right. We cannot deny um, that, can we? No, I don't think so, unless we can kill this draw into it somehow. We can kill it with a, if we play the Horse Master. Uh, right, you need to move down with the Living Willow and uh, make here. two prairies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, put it like that. Make two prairies towards his creature. Like one, two? Yeah. Then you oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, no, I, no, that didn't uh, really yeah, work. new mistake. All right, well, um, <coughs> that's unfortunate because otherwise we could have just killed the Triton Chef now with a Living yes. Willow and then charge our guy over. All right, so we wanted to, we probably want to kill the Triton Chef then, I guess. Yeah, sorry about that. And um. probably block, um, stand next to the Feria and kill the frog. With this creature, because then we'll collect there next turn. Um, don't want to play anything. Probably not. Right. Maybe we want to drop the Tiki Caretaker because uh, he on will. Uh, maybe on itself. Right uh, here. No, I would say aggressively. Right here. Yeah, because he's gonna make. Um, he's gonna <coughs> get protection now on his five one, so we need something to finish off the, the one last health. And he cannot. Yeah, that really, that really sucks. This wouldn't be happening right now. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a bit unfortunate. But now we have the Tiki Caretaker to take out the creature at least. Yeah. Um, oh, the Beastmasters. I had forgotten about those. Maybe we want to draw a card first to see what we get. Oakling. Okay. Oakling is pretty good. Yeah. So um, what do you think about? The Beastmaster defensively. Yeah, because we want to have that one stay alive for as long as possible. And then we just... Uh, Drop this uh, here. Probably yeah. here. I would kill the the 6-2 now and then drop the opening where where your Tiki is standing right now. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. That's um, I'm not missing anything, am I? And then we'll just trade it for the one ones. Yeah, yeah, just trade it. And now we are in an incredibly good position because he's not harvesting anything. We're going to be double harvesting and we have a very powerful board. Yeah, minus that one boneheaded uh, forest there. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been so cool. That I know, uh, I know. I, I can't believe I... I've done that a few times. I don't know why it happens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Alright, so now he miscalculated something, it seems like. Because it feels like he wanted to take sure. out the Viduran Force. Yeah. Maybe he thought it was the old... Uh, yeah. Here I would, I would argue maybe it's worth to play the Enchantress or the Mythmaker to buff the Oakling. So that we can get the uh, 7 damage into his face. Sure. Um, or we play the Horse Master to take out his 1-1 one, one also. Because that then we complete like <laughs> wreck his board again. I kind of like that more because then we can play Aurora to buff mm -hmm. up our seven one to a six six. Mm -hmm. All right, so here I'm putting it here. Or should I draw or anything? Uh, let's see. We we need to get plus one Feria to make my place. So I think we don't have to draw. So we go Horse Master here. Yeah. Or maybe on the left, on bottom left, so we can harvest. Okay. okay. And then opening. Okay. Kill. And, and kill, then kill the 3-3 so three, three first. Okay. Yeah. And then we can make it. But do you think he has something with haste? Because we maybe don't. We can do that next turn. I think we can save it. Yeah. Let's try. If he puts something down, like a <coughs> caretaker or something, we just buff it up. So with Aurora, right? Yeah. I mean, blue has some haste creatures, but... Alright, so that's about toads. For this, we might not even want to spend the Aurora. I say oh. we <laughs> clear it with the Oakling. Alright, so... Alright, I got three more ranks to go. <laughs> Alright, we're doing good. Okay. Uh, you good to go into another one, or do you need yeah, a minute? Let's, let's play. I'm liking this deck. It's fun. Yeah, it's I kind mean, of a weird deck. <laughs> I, I think these types of decks are so much fun because you can do so many unexpected things. I just love that. Yeah, I think that's that's become my favorite uh, play style for sure. I'm gonna find a uh, blue yellow deck that works, and I'll, I'll send you it at some point. Yeah, please do. <laughs> What blues? Uh, I like this hand. Yeah, I like it too. A lot of turtles. I feel like I've been drawing these turtles like crazy these last few games. Yeah, it's really good to find them early rather than late. So I want to no, so. talk to you about something mm -hmm. that I've been thinking about. I don't know if it's good. It might be terrible, but it something that I'm sometimes thinking about when I'm playing second. If you yeah. make double prairies and next turn, like if you make it to the side, because the next turn you can explore and then drop a lake right between the wells so that your sturdy shell can double harvest right away. Right away. But then the problem is that we delay our land build building and we cannot really use the sturdy shell defensively with the enchantress if they are rushing. Plus they, we will reveal which direction we're going to and they can just build there towards us and take it out. So I don't know if it's any good, but it's something I've been thinking about. Well, let's try it. So it's, it's, I have to use explore or no? Uh, we use explore next turn so we don't reveal any unnecessary information because we want to just use it to get, so you but play. I could collect right now if I build it here. Yeah, next turn, but then we can. Yeah, but then we play the normal play, not the not the cool play. But yeah, I think it's better to just play standard. Just drop to the side. All right, I'm gonna do that just because I'm not entirely sure what you're saying yet. All right, so <laughs> and then we're gonna run out of time before I yeah. figure it out. So what I was so, thinking is, make uh, double prairies on turn one and don't play anything else. Like here and here. No, to one side, both towards the one side, and then the sure, next turn sure. we drop explore. To we, so we get closer to the double harvest, and then we drop a lake right between the... Oh, yeah, that is cool. No, one to the right, even. So yeah, right here. Yeah, so yeah, then it can harvest yeah. right away. on. But it's going to be... So you drop it on turn two, so it won't be able to harvest until turn three. This way, it's able to harvest on turn one already. So I don't know if it's any good to do what I said. Yeah, I think if I didn't have the turtle, that was one fairy, yeah. That would definitely work. Mm. Um, so what do we do here? Do we want to st set up our sturdy shell on the other side, or do we want to start getting the Beastmaster out? Um, kind of like to getting the second turtle out, I think. I like the Feria. I mean, the turtles are nice, but we're going to transform them anyways, probably. 
I guess they would have uh, an extra attack, but yeah, no, I think we. I do think it. I think here, right? Yeah, I think we do that. So. And keep explore since it can farm either way. Yeah. So, yeah, we're gonna have a lot stronger economy than his because he's not gonna be able to harvest at all this turn. So he's also playing blue green. Interesting. I don't think it's the same guy. Uh, oh, it's, it's the wish. Yeah, this is starting to look like it. All right, can so we can we kill it? No, it's one step too far away. One, two, yeah. Um, we will be able to kill it next turn. If I play it here. Yeah, because he's gonna move down and harvest with it almost. For sure. For sure, yeah. So, do I need a land here to move though, right? Uh, no, you can drop the land next turn. Um, okay. So now we can just drop a forest somewhere. Um, what do you think? Just straight up this way too. I I think if he's playing this deck, I need to start hitting them in the face. All right. So put put it over there. Right here. Yep. Yeah. And then move this guy up to start getting towards yeah. the foot. Yeah. And uh, next turn he's most likely gonna move down to collect the fairy, and then we step up with the turtle so and take five. it. Five, and we'll have enough for the beastmaster too to get it. Get her we, won't, we will have to play a um, lake though, so we can. Ah, uh, yeah, lake. Right. But uh, yeah, so our turtle is also gonna trade into his three three later, so this is perfect. We get all right. So lake first. Uh, wait, no, you need to step it. Put it one stop. Oh no, you can't. I'm so sorry. Alright, so you need to play Explore here. So you need to first play Explore, next to your turtle, and then drop a lake in front of it. Yeah. So you can oh, because I can't move it up because there's nothing here. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so here, then full we there. Lake. Step into it? Yeah. And then Shift we it. move it. Um, to here or here? Yeah, no, you already right, moved yeah, it, here. so yeah, you have to like put it there. Yeah, and then you need to play the Enchantress. You like her here for the... Probably on the left side, since we already have the turtle yeah. on the right. Alright, that this that just feels so good, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's very satisfying. And we got a, a nice little yeah, forward I mean, one. We can take a, we have a good trade here. Oh no! <coughs> Another oh, elemental. Well, let's That's kill that fine. one. That's fine, trade with that too. <laughs> So now... Uh, he blocked me. Oh no, we can still kill him though. Yeah, go into the pool. Um, <laughs> find another enchantress. Wow. So probably a forest here? Um, or do you want to do double uh, double lands? No, probably a forest, but I'm not sure about that position. Maybe I want to make it um, right next to his right um, water elemental, so we get a little bit more aggressive positioning, because as you said, we need to kill this guy before he gets his wish things going. So if you step onto his lake, then you can drop... Uh, yeah. Right here? Yeah. yeah. And then drop the Beastmaster before you play the Enchantress. On this aggressive style? Mm, we can try. I mean, it, it's a, I kind of like keeping him alive in the back. But yeah, but then we have three creatures in the background. Maybe that's not necessary. Because we're going to kill everything anyway. I think okay. I like the Beastmaster aggressively because the turtle won't be able to go across his, over right. his land. Gabriel in here, yeah. Uh, or in the bottom right to harvest. Oh well, or turtle can harvest there. So yeah, up there is good. Oh yeah, right, because it's a three six. I didn't think yeah. of that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I need to start adding beastmasters to my deck. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not using them. Yeah, that was that. That was the play right there. <laughs> cool, and then we can get uh, this tile here. Yeah, now we get some really aggressive lands going here. But he's close to his wish. Yeah. Here. But let's top the yeah. Viduran for us now. No. We can draw with Shifting Tide. Um, you think we should draw? Uh, we should probably draw with Shifting Tide, yeah, because we want to. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to have the option to drop a uh, forest aggressively in case we find the uh, uh, Viduran forest. Damn it! Yeah. Well, we can trade here if we want, or we can go and try to get hit face. Mm, I like uh, if we're gonna. I think we definitely trade on the left side. Step onto the desert first. So yeah. Collect. That's definitely happening. Um, yeah, I think we should tr trade. Trade here? Yeah, because it's a double collect. Yeah, it's too dangerous to let that. So, I probably 
Then we can maybe draw even because we don't really need any lands here then. So I was thinking about putting the tiki here. To harvest to later? Harvesting. You can just next put turn. it next to the other forest because it's still going to be able to. Yeah, harvest. yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. All right, let's drop first. I'm gonna run out of time. <laughs> okay, Willow. That's pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's gonna be really Should good. Should we go play. aggressive and? S oh no, we can't. This turn. All right, yeah, so we're going. Let's just kill it with the. Here. Don't forget the ticket. I like to put the ticket up now. Oh no, never mind. Ah, I gotcha. Sorry. Because if he now somehow kills the beastmaster, the ticket would have still been able to go up and put up the cool. Maybe drop the living willow aggressively. I uh, I ended the turn. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that would have been a better play, because then I could have uh, enchanted his stit. Oh, he doesn't really have anything going for him. So here, forest, living yeah, willow? Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. We have, uh, Rick, do I want to draw first? No, I need no, to No, we need forest. to drop the forest. Yeah. Uh, right. But we can draw with Gabriel enchantment. Uh, you need to drop the living willow first. Yeah, put it on. Now it would be really nice if we find another Tiki caretaker. There it is. <laughs> I want to buff the 3-3 three, three on the side, so we kill yeah. the 3-4. So here and here? Yeah. Top deck. Now he's going to surrender. Now he's going to get... So? No. I don't know, this deck's super control. He might Let's see, what do we have left up. in our deck that he's going to get from his wishes? Hopefully something really bad. <laughs> Probably a Verduran Force. Uh, Frogify. Right, so so that's one. That means I'm about to draw it though, which is kind Yeah, of weird. that's not bad. All right, so caretaker. That was <laughs> great that he found that because it's not really too good. And we could buff ours and take it out. Uh, yeah, I would probably jump with my first frog onto so his. Uh, yeah, and then build. Uh, then play the tiki caretaker on the land that you just jumped away from to buff the other tiki caretaker. And you think that that's better than getting two extra damage in? I think right. Uh, Taking out his three three. Yeah, yeah, because it's double harvesting. It's, if it wasn't double harvesting, I wouldn't be so scared. Okay, and then uh, oh yeah, and it would just take out my five three probably. Yeah, um, move up now. So on the can... desert probably. Uh, no, I'll put him if here. If you stand on okay. there, then you'll collect fairy as well. Okay. Don't forget to attack his face also. Yeah, I probably sent him out for you. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes right. forget. Um, okay, should so... I move these up or just keep them? They're kind of far away. Yeah, the I'll game will it. be over before anything is worth it, but we can try. Never. <laughs> All right, so he already revealed two cards, so we know that some f sometime soon we're going to find the... Okay, Frogify and Verduran Force. I have to draw it, right? Yeah. All right, so Bye. just... Uh, just uh, Yeah, just kill this 7-7 um, seven, seven with Frogify. Should I draw first? Yeah, yeah, it's a Verduran Force. You can play um, Frogify and Verduran Force. So we need to okay. kill the two two with our Toad. Yeah. And then just go face with everything. We're crushing. Move this to here to play the Ver Rudian, right? Yeah, that's a good idea. Or maybe you put it on the right side because then even if he finds a green creature with Taunt, um, he can't Taunt your Verduran Force. We can still move our 1-1 one, one away and attack with every creature. Plus, this way we collect Feria. I okay. think it's better to put it on the right side. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's a good call. I definitely didn't see that. This Beastmasters didn't work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, they nerfed Beastmaster some time ago, but now they buffed him again, so I kind of want to try it out. All right, so just going to have to go AFK for a few seconds. Okay. I'll... Uh, Trying to figure out how to mute my microphone. Uh, I'm gonna grab a cup of coffee real quick while you do that. All right, great. Thanks. It's not quite as late as it is in uh, Sweden. <laughs> Uh, I just got back. What did you say? All right, so I'm sorry, I'm back. 
Uh, I can do one more game and then I'm going to have to get going. Yeah, perfect. No, this has been uh, an awesome session. We're, uh, we're 4-0, 5-0, something like that? Something like that. We're doing pretty well. And this deck, I'm glad you're having fun with it. I actually okay. absolutely love these type of decks. Yeah, no, this is... Uh, I'll probably play the, the yellow and this the most now. So I find something else somewhere. Shall we maybe go into the deck builder quickly? I like to... If you stop the search, I, th I like to go into the deck builder every now and then and just look at the cards <laughs> and think, is there something here that I don't like when I draw it? Um, well, other than that misplay, the horse master's been good. Um, Tiki's have been awesome. The beast master beast was really good. Do we maybe want to have a third even? Um, I don't think uh, so. Yeah, I think it's a little greedy because then... Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I draw in, if I draw into that, I can't get the extra one one for playing yeah. the master. No, I think two is fine. Oakleen was really good the one time we played it. Yeah, it never even died though, right? So we didn't even get the buff from it. No, it didn't even die, but it was buffed and yeah. we didn't want to play it. So Brooding was good, Shifting Tide's awesome, Sturdy Shells have been great. Um The enchantments we need, the enchantress we need. The Frogify is the only thing we haven't needed because we've just had such good... Uh, we needed that one game, actually. Yeah, we took you out the Apex with it. The I don't know if we can do treating banquets, no, but it might be they've true. been pretty good, and they've been we've been drawing them because we have to. I don't know. I don't know. What would we replace it with if we were to replace it? Um, currently, I'm really happy with this list, at least the way the games have been going. All right, so let's just keep it like this. Okay. I'm sure we'll run into like some crazy rush deck or something and I'll want to change it. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, this deck is doing pretty okay against rush because we have this... I mean... Um, the Living Willow is, is as a 7-7, seven, seven, stops a lot of stuff. The Yellow Rush is a bit too powerful maybe because it... all of the Death Touch stuff and so much haste. Sure. But I feel like our, our minions are pretty efficient because yeah, they're yeah. low cost and... I think red would actually be scarier, but I have a... Alright, so anyways, let's... Uh... So what do you think about this starting hand? Hmm. I probably... If it were me, I'd get rid of these two. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. If we had a little bit stronger creature, I would keep the yeah. tide. But in this situation, we really need to find something else that we can get used of. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Did we get the same cards? Yeah. It was meant to be. We got the same cards. <laughs> I know, yeah. The same. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. We only had two of these in the deck, too, so. Yeah. Um, All right, well, at least we can drop a Sturdy Shelter 1. That's a very strong start. Should we try your strategy? No, we have a weak hand. I think if you want to try these things, you probably want to have a little confidence. But now you went to the right. That's the wrong side. Yeah, I was just going to say, sorry, it's, <laughs> it's too sure. All right, well, if we lose, it's because you went right. Right. And because you probably, you know, you don't want me to catch you in uh, ranks. <laughs> like, try no, to throw the game. Yeah, you make of play. course. Next time we should not <laughs> play land. We should probably draw a card. <laughs> uh, Bandy. I think I know Bandy. Seen him around somewhere. I'm not sure where. So, turn to Ground Shaker. It's not terrible. No? Um... um this is one of those moments you're happy that you have a sturdy shell instead of a weak harvester. Yeah, yeah, one of my uh, normal collectors would get rocked. All right, so collect, and I would probably put a forest here. Why? Because we have the living willow, so next turn I can play it. Yeah, that's a good point. I would definitely also play a forest. Uh, you put it here as well? I mean, I, I think that way we can... I would put it either there or above your lake and pray that we find the <laughs> enchantment next turn. But if we don't find the enchantment, <coughs> your side is... But actually, if we don't find an enchantment, we just drop the second forest down to the left anyway and put the living world there and we still have explored. Yeah, so put it here? Yeah, because uh, we have great synergy. Uh, if we can just find it, let's see. That's it, right? Yeah. So what we need to find is uh, enchantress or enchantment. Uh, 
Oh, a flamethrower. We need to go kill that. So it was pretty good that we went this way, I, I think. Um, so I could explore. Problem is, he'll just probably kill it. Um, yeah, I think you need to explore to the left, like from your forest, and then put the forest to the left of that. So you can't he hit still it. get to me. Are you saying right here? Right there, yeah. And then next turn we find the, what we need and make a treat and banquet and kill him. Oh, well, no, wait. I could we'll, also replace the... We uh, will need a lake. Hmm. Yeah, you can play the Beastmaster and the Living Willow. Then the Living Willow is big enough to take out the... Well, I could, three if we go here, I could shift in tides here. Next turn, yeah. There, right? Yeah, I think that's a good play. So we... And your Beastmaster is still far away to be safe. And you need to play the Beastmaster before you play the Willow here. So we'll do that. For sure. Uh, just keep him there. I think that's good, right? I would drop the Living Willow probably. Right here? Yeah. I would have probably put the Living Willow on the other side and the Beastmaster where you're hovering now. Oh. Because the yeah, Living right. Willow would have two attacks, so it would also take out the Beastmaster. Well, hopefully this works and we get a buff and I can take out his... Uh, yeah, that would be really good. <coughs> so, if he's playing the flamethrower, he's likely to play mono, mono red, I would say, since it's three, the three mountains. No. Hmm. Oh no. That sucks. Uh, that is not good. Alright, so now we top deck. Enchantress, come on. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> okay, so you can kill this 5-6 uh, now. Do you so see? I do a, a pool here. Step into it. Yeah. Shift and tide. And then the uh, Enchantress back here. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> he... I mean, this is so funny. No one sees this coming. That's just, I love it. At least not in, in these ranks. It's, um, it's hard to foresee these plays. And that's what makes it so fun. So now let's hope he doesn't have... Um, One damage. <laughs> yeah, Cypher Survive uh, or something. Like <laughs> yeah, I mean, the chance of him having a Cypher Survive is not too low. I wouldn't but he only surprised. needs one damage, right? Because this is going to yeah. be one... So, or that little 2-2 two -two that deals the damage. Yeah, Flame Spitter would be bad uh, as well. It's probably going to happen. Well, it didn't do it yet, so... Oh, Soul Drain. No, okay, so well, he had to play a Flame Burst. Yeah. It's but this 3-2 uh, is dealing far too much damage to us. We need to yeah. drop a Viduran Force and kill it next turn, I think. Put it right in front to take 3, or...? I think we can take three damage oh, no, to I, face. I put here. Just put it there, yeah. Um, he's going to have four deserts next turn, but he won't have enough area for Last Nightmare unless he has Soul Pact. Go here? Yeah. Um, should I move for Rapa? Probably. Mm. Spark Keeper here to collect if something goes wrong. I could collect from the one stop up as well. Doesn't make yeah. too much difference. Okay, so we're down to 10 health, but we're going to have three creatures on the board, hopefully. Sure. I don't um, think he's running burn either, because he's got the flamethrower. Yeah, but maybe he just doesn't have so many cards yet, and this is a common card. And he just used it because he didn't mm -hmm. have the others. But it's a three, uh, three rock, right? So three mountains, whatever. All right, so he's playing. All right, that's fine. We'll just give it the, the banquet. Yeah, this is great because now it didn't deal that extra three damage to us as well. Let's uh, collect. Um, would you draw here? I would. Um, wait a second. Actually, I'll uh, play a play a something here once I fly. Yeah, I would put a land over there. Probably a green land since. Most of our blue creatures are not too big. So 
So next turn he's going to be able to play Last Nightmare, unfortunately. But um, yeah, we got. Yeah, it's going to take almost all of his Feria, and we have good collecting going on, and we have one of our combo pieces in hand. Oh, a Battle Rager! Now we need a Frogify. Because hmm. the Battle I wonder Rager if there's something we can do with this force. If we get a oh wait, oh. just play. Um, can we play? Um, hmm. I want to use Gabriel Enchantment on his creature, but it doesn't really matter because the problem is his effect. We're probably going to draw regardless, right? Yeah, we probably want to draw and find uh, Frogify here. It's not Frogify, and now even if we use Gabriel Enchantment to draw, we won't. Oh, you know what we should have done? Tell me. Should have gone. A land here, move this up, hit face, buffed her, and traded. We definitely should have done that. That would have been way better. All right, so now I think we just go face, because he's anyway going to do the trade. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. That's really unfortunate. Yeah. Do we want yes, to play get familiar with do the we, deck. Do we <laughs> want to play Gabriel Enchantment so that our creature will survive, our 8-8? Eight, eight? Oh. Let's let's do it. Play I think that. And we can get another card too. Yeah, let's do it. Find it. Uh, yeah. Let's do it. Worth playing here? Probably not. No, I don't think so. We can play it next turn, maybe in the top left. So uh, now, yeah. even if he has a fire bomb or something, he won't be able to take out the Verdurin Force. But we're going to take 8 damage. Yeah, hopefully we can kill him before he kills us. I guess that's the plan. <laughs> if we had moved the 2 4 up, we would have had lethal. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Double mistakes. Well, you know, it's, it's getting familiar with the decks. Too. Yeah, it's, it's too much it's, movement. I mean, you, you need to get used to it. We have so. I mean, you're not used to thinking, like, okay, our 2 4 creature and our orb it would have been lethal if we had moved it. <laughs> um. Yeah, it just changes the stats and you don't know, have a pool. I think back. just um, put this tile here, move hit face, bring her up real quick, and play the uh, the charger here, or maybe uh, I don't know. I think the next turn is gonna play last nightmare. So I think we don't want to reveal that we're moving up or two four yet. I think you just. Jump over with Vidoran Force to the other side, uh -huh. and then attack his face, and then you play a Prairie to the left of him, so that we later can turn that into a forest or something if we need, and then you put one, um, one land in front of your two four and move it up. Because now we have lethal even if it takes out the uh, eight yeah. five. So as long as he doesn't have five, we're good. Yeah, he could play two. <coughs> Flame burst or a rebel slinger and the flame burst. Well, he already used two of them, right? The flame bursts. Removal. I don't remember. I think he used a firebomb. But here's the last nightmare. He used the three damage. Uh... uh oh. Oh, I think we're fine, right? Not if he has a cypher's wrap. Please don't. Ah. Damn it. Uh, we lost the game. That was that was you, right? You were doing that uh, strategy, not telling me the lethal play. Of course, of course. You're not gonna catch me in rank. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Uh, do you have another one, or you gotta get going? No, I have to get going, unfortunately. But I had a lot of fun. Thank you for doing this with me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hopefully, we can play some games. I added you on the uh, my list, so. Yeah, uh, I, I saw. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to playing against your shifting tides shenanigans. <laughs> no, it'll be it'll be the uh, blue yellow deck by then. <laughs> All right, of course. <laughs> we'll see. All right, man. All right. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Good night. Yep.